Welcome into the Michigan State Hockey Hub. Um, it's been a while since since I've been on. We had all kinds of computer issues again. I'm on a new computer, which I'm now noticing the this is a new computer. So the camera's a little bit wider. You all can see more of my room here. I gotta be careful about that, I guess. But um computer issues, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, so I actually have not been on since the GLI. Um, or before the GLI, excuse me. I think the last show was a first half recap. So definitely go check that out if you have not yet. GLI was a disaster. Um, just they looked flat. Both games got swept. And I, I'm going to kind of brush through this recap and mostly do a preview. But I did want to talk some big picture stuff as well this week. Then they go and um, just a bad effort overall at Ohio State, in my opinion. Um they get swept by Ohio State, and they only score one goal all weekend. Um, Michigan State's lone goal came from Jesse Tucker in game one Friday night. Lost 6 to nothing on Saturday. Disinterested, in my opinion. And again, I don't want to harp on these players or these coaches. This is a process that takes a lot of time. I don't want it to sound like, you know, I'm mad at it or anything, you know. But it's just what it was. Friday night, they got down early. Jesse Tucker scored, and I thought, okay, maybe you can save some face here and try to at least make the score look a little bit better, score another goal, and they didn't. Um, it was just a tough effort overall. Now, don't get me wrong, Ohio State's a good team. That game's on the road, but I'm starting to get concerned. I am. They dropped those two games against Minnesota before the break, Come back out after the break of the GLI in that effort. You lose to Ferris State the first night, and you're a better team than Ferris State, at least what you've shown all year long. And then you drop it to to, to, to Michigan Tech the second day as well in the consolation game. Not the best stretch of hockey that we've seen. Now, okay, it could be streaky. You know, sometimes teams go through streaks. Hot streak, cold streak. Let's hope there's another hot streak. But this is a pivotal point in the season right now, and I want to keep everyone's perspective in check. I th I think most things in life, if you go in with the right mindset and perspective, the outcome, no matter what it is, if you have the right mindset and perspective, you are not going to be overly frustrated or upset or anything. You know, it's more about just like mentally where you are. Coming into this season, we knew it would be a rebuild. We knew it was it would take time. The perspective and mindset should be, let's see just how the coaching staff is. Let's see how these incoming freshmen are, the transfers. You know, it's an evaluation. I know we've been doing that forever. But that's what happens when you get a new coach and a lot of new players. Okay, let's see where they are. Let's see the style. Let's see what they can implement in year one and hope they can build off that in two, three, four, five years out. The recruiting. Has not taken a dip at all. In fact, it has been significantly better. Significantly better. Um, really, really excited about the recruiting. I retweeted on the Michigan State Hockey Hub Twitter page today a thread that Jeremy put out. Jeremy Dewar put out updating everybody on some of the recruits. It's great. I know uh, Brad La um, Laplante has been doing some recruiting as well for Rivals.com. Some some coverage there, of course, of course, Nate bought as well. Um, so the recruiting news is starting to pick up more. Okay, so the coaching, I don't think it's been some huge glare in coaching, right? I think Michigan State has the right guy and the right staff. Check. That's huge, right? That is so big when you're building from the ground up. Michigan State has already accomplished things this year. I did not expect them in a million years to accomplish Multiple wins against ranked teams, sweeps against ranked teams, top 10 wins. I mean, they've been a good team. They're just hitting a tough stretch. And I'm seeing a lot of people quickly turn back into what they have been the past 10 years, which is kind of, you know, not negative Nancy's, but, you know, frustrated, expecting the worst type of a thing. And it's fair. They've lost seven of eight. It's fair to think that way. I'm just asking that you just try to keep things in perspective. Like, when you go to McDonald's, you don't expect to have the best cheeseburger ever. 
right? And when you get that cheeseburger, you don't get, oh my God, this is, I'm so mad because this isn't the best cheeseburger in the world. We shouldn't expect Michigan State in year one of a new coaching staff to be the best cheeseburger in the world, right? Let's just take it in stride, see what we can take from this season, keep a good mindset going forward, see which players can stick. I think that a lot of the young players are good. Now, some of them have hit kind of that, that lull, right? Happens a lot with freshmen their freshman year. Um, but overall, you, I think you've got the right coach, the right staff, good recruiting, and that's what you need to start building a foundation. They might lose a lot more games this year. They might miss the tournament. It might be a collapse. Okay. No one expected them to be there to begin with. Just try to keep the right mindset, the right perspective. Moving on to Penn State. Now, I always, you know, I have so many technical difficulties. I really don't know what the hell's wrong with me. But computer issues, well, now I have Canva issues. Yes, I use, you know, Canva. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this. Um, I'm having Canva issues. So I was able to download two graphics today, and the other two would not download. So you get two graphics today. I'm sorry. Hopefully I can get this fixed. But um, heading over to Penn State, this is going to be another tough series for, for, for Michigan State. And right now, Penn State is 17-5, and five, 22 points in the Big Ten so far, 7-5 and five in Big Ten play. Just to give you an idea of where Michigan State is, Michigan State's now in fourth. They're below Ohio State in the Big Ten standings, 12, 11, and 1, 20 points. So, I mean, you could theoretically climb. You could climb some. Um, You just have to bounce back, and that's what's going to be so tough right now. It's just not the best team to have to bounce back against because they're getting pretty good goaltending, and they score a bunch. And as you look at these two teams in comparison, Michigan State, here are the special teams breakdown. Michigan State, 17.3% on the power play. That's good for 38th in the nation. The PK has been struggling. I think Maddie wrote an article about that last weekend. You can find that on my timeline or Maddie Warren's timeline. Um, the penalty kill, 81.3%, 23rd. So you've fallen in both of these categories. Um, the power play had been around 20%, 21%. As I mentioned, MSU's lost seven of the past eight, scoring two goals or less in six straight. Remember the beginning of the year, it was, oh my God, this team's shooting the puck more, they're scoring a little bit more. You know, this is exciting. Well, they're still shooting a pretty decent amount. They're just not getting the same scoring chances. Or excuse me, they're not converting on the at the same rate on their scoring chances. And what we saw last week, you know, was an avoidable icing. A couple of those Friday night that just made me upset. And I don't know why. I usually don't get too upset about something like that. That just happens in games, but I was. Bad turnovers. Been kind of a case all year. Um, passing, not crisp. It was stuff like that. It was focused things, in my, in my opinion. I'm not saying that they're not focused. It was in that moment, they were not connecting. So. The goals per game has dropped as well. Now below three at 2.88 goals per game, and they're allowing 2.79. So pretty much you're based only off those stats. You're looking at coin flips, right? Coin flips every game if you're going to win or lose if those stats continue. Look at Penn State, 15.8% on the power play, 47th. Penalty kill, 79.6, 38th. Both of those stats, the special teams are not as good as Michigan State, yet they're looking like a much better team. I have a much better record so far. This is their first games. This year's their first games of 2023. They did not play last week. Maybe they'll be a little bit rusty, or maybe they'll be rested and ready to go. That's something we're going to have to find out. I'm hoping it's it's the first part there where they're a little bit rusty. Leading after one period, they're 12-1. and one. I don't like that one bit. They get that lead. And then that's what happens when you score a lot of goals. As you can see, they score 3.73 goals per game and only allow 2.36 goals 
per game. This is a really talented team. And we saw them was a month ago, month and a half ago, whenever that was. Remember that game Michigan State lost Friday night, I believe, in just one of the last 30 seconds or so, Penn State scored. Michigan State got them the next night. That could have been a sweep, would have been huge. This is a much-needed bounce back for Michigan State. And it's not season over right now. I truly do not think that. If you can beat Ohio State, or excuse me, if you can beat Penn State this weekend, imagine if you could sweep them, what that would do. Do I think that's likely? No. Not the way that this team's playing right now, but we've seen that they are capable of it, right? We've seen that recently. Now, Nash Neenhouse has been out past few games. We'll see if he returns to the lineup. He's a big part of this team, don't get me wrong, but it's not like they're having to play a certain depth player who never plays, right? They went 7-D quite a bit, so like Victor Hurtig is slotting in, right? He's playing normal amounts, so now they're rolling six, and you're seeing a lot more Gavin Best, um, a freshman from Minnesota. I believe he's like six, six for two, you know, a larger body. He's, he's, he's number 27, if you're wondering who that's been. I think he's played okay. Um, tiny sample size, few games. You know, I don't really know. Um, I remember talking to a few people before this season that thought he would be a pretty pretty good player. Um, showed showed some offense at one point in his game previously to Michigan State. So we'll see. But right now, this weekend matchup is just so big. It's so big. You you win one or two here, you as a team realize, okay, we're not dead. You get swept here and you lose. Nine to ten. What well, I mean, you're doing everything you can to avoid what happened in the second part of last year, right? Bad losing streak snowballs into just a complete disaster of a second half. You can't have that. There's too much on the line right now in year one. And wins and losses matter, but they're not the most important thing. What I don't want is the team to lose complete confidence. Players are not developing because there's not as much confidence. You know, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that's a possibility. I would hate to see that happen. I think that they get one this weekend. I do. I do. I think Michigan State hopefully wins at least one this weekend. Give me Saturday night when it's a great opportunity, as we see here. Let me pull up the graphic again. Power play is only at 15.8%. If you can win the special teams battle here, if you can get your penalty kill back on track, and 81.3% isn't awful, you know, it's top third. But if you can get it clicking again of where where it was, I think it's a good opportunity this weekend to do it. Now, we know Penn State's going to throw a million shots on goal. Dylan St. Cyr um, did not finish the second game. He was pulled for Pierce Charles, and I think that was just a okay, this game's out of hand. We need to get Pierce some playing time in case we do need him due to injury or anything like that. Don't hate that move at all. Um, it's just I, I just think this is such a crucial weekend because you're in week two of the new year, series two. Let's right the ship here. Let's get a win. Let's get a sweep, whatever it may be, so that we avoid unraveling. Um, either way, before we leave here, let me run through the standings. Again, this standings graphic would not download. So Minnesota is first at 30 points, 16 and 6 overall. Penn State, 22 points, 17 and 5 overall. Third place, Ohio State, 14 and 7 and 1 for 21 points. Fourth place, Michigan State, 12, 11 and 1 for 20 points. Notre Dame in fifth. 10, 10, and 2 for 15 points. Michigan and 6, 12, 7, and 1 for 12 points. Wisconsin, the caboose, 7th place, 9, 13, and 0 overall for 6 points in the Big Ten standing. So that's going to do it for the Michigan State Hockey Hub this week. A little bit of a preview, a little bit of a recap, a little bit of big picture. We'll be at you again. After this weekend's game to recap, go green.